activate it, they will like. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh-huh. Hello. Mm-hmm. Dino Hello. Hi. Good Hello. evening. Hello. Hello. We can do it in four languages, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but we stuck with English language. Okay. Today, tonight, we have questions and answers, and we are going. Uh, the topics are partial extraction therapy and Myvan technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are waiting for your questions. And while and we wait, maybe we can do a presentation. Yes, that would be a good idea. Okay, let's do it. Is it The topics are partial extraction therapy and uh, I want to introduce you my Orlando group all my friends that I met at Dental XP and we are really active WhatsApp group exchanging our ideas, our cases, our opinions, having fights on Friday evening. And uh, here you see Chuck uh, Schwimmer, you know him from Spot Facebook group, saying that partial extraction therapy is our last hope. Salahu Weiss, Chuck Schwimmer, Jorge Campos Aliaga, Howard Gluckman, Armando Ponzi, me and Richard Martin, who is going to, uh, to uh, join Facebook. And uh, our partial extraction therapy group uh, is with uh, Dr. Boris Salama, with Jonathan De Tattle, Mitzias, Hakon, Marcello, Udata Kerr and uh, Darcy Luis Fonseca. We are doing uh, multi-center studies uh, about partial extraction therapy. Why partial extraction therapy? It is uh, because uh, we can do socket preservation, but uh, the most techniques result in uh, only some degree of socket preservation. There is no and uh, absolutely socket preservation and rich preservation. It's just to a certain amount. Mm. And the next topic is the Maivan technique. Maivan technique is uh, nothing other than uh, simultaneous hard and soft tissue preservation for socket type 2 and socket type 3. Socket type 2, socket uh, if the fasci facial soft tissue is present but the buccal plate is partially missing following extraction of the tooth and socket uh, type uh, 3, the buccal bone plate is missing and also the facial soft tissue is reduced. In my experience, but also according to the literature, mostly that the patients, uh, young patients, uh, and uh, this uh, socket type 2 is a consequence of uh, childhood uh, trauma of the teeth and mostly really aesthetic uh, demanding patients and uh, what I find, what all of us, uh, of us uh, find often is a vertical root fracture. And uh, when these patients come we have to have protocol, we should know what works in our hands. Any question? Uh, no, no, I just wanted to say that we have some uh, some followers that are uh, wishing us uh, hello and if you want to 
just respond. Nice. I think that Dr. Salama just uh, said Wow, hello. Dr. Salama. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Dental XP team here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the biggest fans here. And uh, let's come back to Chuck uh, Swimmer and uh, his expression that uh, partial extraction therapy is our last hope. Uh, it is just a screenshot from uh, Facebook and uh, one colleague uh, showing uh, six years result, uh, imagine, uh, implant in bone and everything is healthy six years after implant placement. And all of us happy, a lot of likes, a lot of loves and uh, actually it's scary. This is do we promise it to our patients? We act like it's normally that implants are going to last for the whole life. And uh, in fact, we are happy when we see one implant that it's six or eight years in function and doesn't have any bone resorption. And uh, this is what we see with partial extraction therapy. Look carefully. You can see the tooth. This is CBCT superimposition and then uh, implant placement and after implant also integration. Uh, this CBCT superimposition is uh, part of our study that we are doing, uh, comparing uh, post-extraction implant placement in standard way, let's say like it, uh, to partial extraction therapy. And it's really beautiful to see, it's impressive to see there is no change. There is almost no socket remodeling. Mm. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it seems we have our first question. Nice. Uh, it was, uh, if there are there any age restrictions in the partial extraction therapy? No, there are not age restrictions in partial extraction therapy. Uh, there are uh, just few contraindications uh, like uh, acute inflammation, a tooth with uh, mobility, with uh, active uh, periodontitis, and uh, these are contraindications. But uh, uh, regarding age, there are not contraindications. Thank okay. you for your question. Okay, let's continue. Yes, we can see video here showing uh, an, another case with uh, partial extraction therapy and implant placement and showing there is no uh, bone remodeling, no socket remodeling. The buccal bundle bone is uh, like it was. Uh, this is CBCT superimposition uh, done in Italy uh, and uh, everything is in one color, color green. It shows that there is no volume change. If we would have volume change, we would have an, another color in these areas. But there is no volume change. And uh, it's not uh, everything about the bone. It's uh, also soft tissue. A lot of cases that uh, Jorge has shown uh, and uh, Chuck has shown for uh, low jaw, incisal uh, uh, area especially, we can really maintain uh, keratinized gingiva very well. And you know, we have learned to place post extraction implants with gap to augment this gap, to do uh, he individual healing abutment or a provisional crown. We have learned from Dr. Salama and Agnini that uh, maybe we should really place also connective tissue uh, graft, veneer grafting. I'm convinced we should do it. And uh, instead of uh, this material filling the gap, now we have socket shield. But socket shield is not uh, only, you know, a piece of slow resorbable bone augmentation material. Uh, socket shield uh, has life. It has blood supply for the buccal bundle bone. 
and blood supply also for peri-implant soft tissue, for peri-implant connective tissue. And uh, this is something that we uh, talk about it um, not very often, but uh, Skla and his team, they found out on animal research that uh, peri-implant connective tissue has uh, poor blood supply. I speak about connective tissue that uh, correspondent to connective tissue adjacent to the root cement. Something is missing and what is missing is blood supply coming uh, from periodontal ligament blood vessels. Seems like we have another question from Dr. Maurice Salama. Uh, he asked about how do you prepare patients for PIT concept? Do you do anything, anything differently? What about uh, post-operative management? For partial extraction therapy, I don't do anything different except that I explain to my patients what I'm going to do uh, because uh, I explain to them that uh, th this is a therapy that is uh, rather new and we have five to ten years result uh, right now and uh, I have never experienced uh, a patient that uh, didn't believe in it or didn't say, yes, I want to have it. And it is especially with medical doctors. Uh, I have some of uh, partial extraction therapy patients, they are medical doctors, and when I explained uh, to them what I'm going to do, they say, yes, of course, because you know in human medicine you don't go to take out the whole organ if only a part of it is diseased. Thank you. Maybe it's time to answer the, uh, the other question, yes. which is after implant placement and bone graft, uh, do you prefer free gingival graft or Ivan in modification as explained? Uh, after implant placement and bone graft, do you prefer free gingival graft or Ivan in modification? Yes. Huh. Uh, my one is actually simultaneous heart and soft tissue augmentation. I do it when I have a patient with socket type 2 or socket type 3. Uh, there is tooth extraction and in the same time I do a socket augment, uh, heart tissue augmentation and soft tissue augmentation. And uh, after four months I come back to place an implant. And uh, if there is, uh, if I miss some uh, horizontal uh, volume, I prefer connective tissue graft. Okay. I hope it's... If well, you guys have any other questions uh, regarding the answers, feel free to comment, so we will, Dr. Paul will answer it. Maybe yes. we should switch to my one technique now. No, we should, we should. Eventually we will come to myelin technique, maybe it's better that we continue with partial extraction, okay. so... Because, so, or maybe we continue with the questions because two others... Yes, it's right. better, yeah. yeah. So, uh, should we expect remodeling of the socket she... Uh, oh, oh, oh. No, no, first one was, how do you manage a chronic apical cyst and are these teeth still candidates for partial extraction therapy? Yes, these teeth are still candidates for partial extraction therapy and uh, in majority of all cases I do apicoectomy together with uh, 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 socket shield. Uh, uh, I am going to show you a case uh, uh, with uh, this. I include apicoectomy, like uh, I have uh, learned you, Matko, you are doing it uh, also. And uh, to make sure that I really remove all apical inflammation tissue. It's uh, like in this case, or this case, or this case, okay. Let's go to play. There is a really large uh, apical area and uh, I have done a socket shield for one side and uh, just uh, augmented. This is in another patient with large periapical uh, chronic area and I have done modified socket shield uh, 
I left the medial and distal uh, parts of root longer to have stability, not to lose stability, and uh, augmented this area with the tuberosity. The patient uh, was recent, recently here and it looks uh, really, really good. Unfortunately, she decided not to uh, have implants uh, but the bridge, but I'm going to follow this case and to show it. So we have another question regarding the placement, the 3D position. Uh, the question is, how much space should be left between implant and the root surface, between the shield? Yes, this is a question that we are talking in our groups, in our patent Orlando group uh, every day and uh, have tried to come uh, to some uh, consensus. It is like that. Uh, an implant uh, placement should be prosthetically driven. An implant should be placed uh, in an optimal position and then we can have a bigger or a smaller gap. We can, the all histologies that we have showing uh, bone between implant threads are histologies where implant is in contact to the socket shield. But it can be dangerous uh, if you are not really experienced because uh, you can fracture your shield and uh, have uh, problems. And uh, for this reason, it's safer to have a gap between implant and socket shield. And uh, the most important thing in the whole therapy is uh, that uh, you should uh, shape your socket shield to have enough place uh, for soft tissue between implant abutment and socket shield. We need two or three millimeter of soft tissue thickness between socket shield and implant abutment. We should really uh, shape our socket shield uh, in this way. Okay, so uh, hello, uh, Carlos. We have some uh, questions Hi, from Carlos. our uh, dear friend Carlos uh, regarding the apical cyst removal with apicoectomy. And uh, he is also uh, concerned about how much tissue do we lose if we do the apicoectomy, probably the soft tissue? Uh, we lose the tissue and the socket uh, must be stable. And if we have done, even if we have already uh, prepared our socket shield and we have done apicoectomy and if we realize that socket is not stable, we must remove it. Don't go any risk with it. So, uh, there are some further questions about uh, bone or tissue level implants. Which, which one do you use in these kind of procedures? Uh, actually, I, I use uh, bone uh, level implants. Uh, I used to use tissue level implants a few years ago. Now, uh, I think most of us are using uh, bone level implants. And uh, it's really preferable uh, when we have uh, implants with a really pronounced, nice platform switch. And uh, this is uh, also an, another topic, not another topic I already started to talk about. It, this is really important in partial extraction therapy, in implantology in general, but especially in partial extraction therapy. Uh, we need this space between implant abutment, implant crown and uh, socket shield. And uh, for this reason we need implants with uh, better, with a bigger platform switching. With, uh, we need a nice concave umbrella emergence profiles uh, to make sure that we really have space between uh, socket shield and implant. Uh, still another question, question regarding periapical pathology. Uh, Paul Kozi has asked, uh, do, you use, Hi, Paul. do you use laser to treat periapical pathology during uh, socket shield technique? Yes, I do. We use laser. Uh, we have laser now for a few months. We use it, but I can't tell that it uh, really makes difference. I, uh, we use laser because uh, we want to uh, make sure that uh, that uh, properly keratage is done and uh, you know that uh, 
all tissue, all uh, disease tissue is removed and uh, laser cannot hurt. We use laser. Thank you. Uh, I think we missed just one question, mm -hmm. uh, which was, uh, can we do socket shield on root canal treated tooth uh, which had post or uh, which had some uh, endodontic post or on cracked tooth? Uh, it's like that. On uh, cracked uh, uh, teeth, uh, what we can do, we can uh, do a proximal socket shield like uh, Khan described it. Uh, I'm speaking about vertical fractures if the fracture goes from the buccal to the palatal direction. We can do it. And uh, we can keep uh, uh, proximal socket shields and it, this is often very helpful if the uh, adjacent area is edentulous or there is an implant in adjacent area. And uh, if the fracture is the, in uh, mesiodistal direction, we can still perform socket shield if the socket shield has a good stability. Uh, Boimer has done uh, studies uh, on uh, dogs and uh, he separated uh, socket shields and uh, had really nice histological results. And uh, in his paper, he published also a case of a patient with a correct uh, root and uh, he just, uh, let's say, refreshed the fracture line and uh, has achieved really nice result. But I really don't recommend to start partial extraction therapy on cracked roots. Okay. We have another question from Carlos. Uh, he is asking why not delayed placement? Uh, doing socket shield and graft and wait? Is it because you will lose uh, buccal and maybe easier to insert the implant? Is it maybe easier to, 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 to perform the socket shield technique and then put some graft material and then go to, to stage, stage therapy? Yes. And then place I... the implant okay. a little bit later. Thank you. Uh, there are some indications for Glocka approach and I used to tell uh, in my presentations that the one of indications is uh, if you are a beginner with partial extraction therapy. If you are a beginner with partial extraction therapy, you don't feel familiar, you, you don't feel really relaxed uh, with socket shield and implant placement and you can delay your uh, implant placement. And uh, there are also some other indications like uh, uh, socket type uh, uh, 4, I mean uh, sagittal root position uh, uh, type 4, uh, how Khan described it, because uh, you don't have encourage for your uh, stability for your implant. Also, if uh, there is no epical bone and you are not really experienced, uh, say uh, implant, uh, say the root is uh, on the border to the sinus and uh, in these cases it's also better to stage approach, to do glocker approach. If there is an acute inflammatory process but you want to do socket shield, you don't want to lose your buccal bundle bone but uh, you don't want to take a risk placing an implant, you can also uh, do delayed uh, Glocka approach. This is my first socket shield case. Uh, this is a colleague uh, from our city and I explained to her what I'm going to do but I didn't feel confident with uh, socket shield and placing implants so I delayed this procedure. And the uh, other case uh, there was no bone apical and uh, there was no possibility to uh, place an implant uh, uh, to have a good primer stability and uh, for this reason I have done a Glocka approach. Also if there is an apical cyst, you see here the case with apicoectomy, Glocka approach and uh, also if there is a tooth with recession, I used to do Glocka approach to make socket shield, to augment the site, 
uh, to cover with pedicolated connective tissue graft and come later to place an implant. Okay, uh, what about uh, provisional, uh, provisional restoration on the socket shield? Um, do you uh, do some provisional abutment on the pet area or you postpone uh, the provisionals with some Maryland bridge or something like that? Which one? Do you you can do whatever. If you, have good, uh, if you have good implant stability, it's of course great service to the patient and it is really good also to keep the whole tissue. Uh, great service to uh, put immediately a provisional crown or an individual healing abutment. Although, in my experience, it's not so of tremendous importance like uh, in uh, standard post-extraction post implants because uh, socket shield really maintains, keeps the tissue. Uh, and uh, when you place an immediate provisional crown, uh, make sure that uh, if you are not doing it by yourself, but the technician in the lab or your referral dentist, make sure that this provisional crown has a nice emergence profile. Uh, if the implant has a good primary stability, I prefer to, uh, uh, to put a provisional crown and if not, I like uh, individual healing abutment, I use VPI cervical system and uh, it helps a lot to make it really, really fast in no time. Okay, did we, did we do all the questions? No, no, there is some more. There is, there is one question regarding uh, apical root resorption. What about those teeth that have uh, root resorption, can we perform socket shield on those teeth? We can uh, left only the healthy part of roots. And uh, if there is a root resorption, if there is an inflammatory root resorption, uh, we shouldn't pre perform partial extraction therapy with these roots. If uh, the root is ankylosite and if there is some uh, replacement root resorption, yes, in this case we can do it. Okay, and what about uh, if we uh, unintentionally leave the, the tip of the root uh, in, in the socket? Can, uh, can it uh, harm the implant afterwards? We shouldn't uh, leave a part of apex in the socket. Uh, when we do partial extraction therapy, we should remove the whole canal uh, inhaled uh, content and the uh, apical part of the root. We shouldn't leave anything. I mean, we shouldn't leave apex of the tooth. We should remove it. We should take, if we are not sure, we should take uh, x-ray and even if we should uh, prefer apicoectomy, we can do apicoectomy, but we should remove apex of the tooth. Another question regarding, uh, regarding your uh, surgical approach. Uh, the question on the poll was, is the the flapless flapless technique is it better i always prefer flapless uh, technique and uh, when i am preparing uh, socket shield uh, i use a gingiva retractor and uh, in this way uh, we can avoid uh, injury to the gingiva and uh, sometimes i do just a small really really small incision uh, to really go sure that I don't leave any edges of uh, socket shield. And uh, in this way I uh, manage my cases. Uh, there are gingiva retractors and Harvey Gluckman uh, has a uh, really nice uh, one. Uh, it's uh, from t titanium and um, it's not uh, rigid like uh, the other gingiva retractors. Uh, what about uh, ozodensification? Uh, do you use uh, ozodensification drills to increase primary stability? Always, okay. always, always. Uh, Denza drills to increase what, primary stability. What about drilling? Do you drill through the root with the densified burrs? Asks Dr. Azif Mazar. Uh, 
Uh, no, <laughs> I zil. Uh, I don't do it uh, because uh, they are too expensive to go through the route mm -hmm. with uh, tensor bus. And uh, I, I removed the palatal uh, part. It is uh, Chuck Swimmer's uh, spot protocol. And he also goes with the high speed, the first initial drilling, and then goes uh, to uh, tensor bus. Uh, normally, I remove the palatal part of the uh, root and I shape my socket shield. I, I shape it totally. In this uh, way, I have more space to remove my palatal part of the root. There are really a lot of questions now that arise. Uh, Time is out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what about the minimum thickness of the shield? Uh, to prevent the resorption and uh, eventual expo expo expositions of the shield, how to manage that? It is, it is like that. We still don't have consensus about the minimal shield thickness, but uh, we are about one millimeter and a half, uh, thinking that it must be a good thickness, minimal thickness. And to avoid uh, shield exposure, well, there is a difference between external and internal shield exposure. And uh, for, to avoid external shield exposure, it's important to use gingiva retractor or to make a small flap and uh, to make sure that we don't leave any edges, uh, nothing sharp of our socket shield. And uh, I have learned it in Dental XP forum from Chuck, from Jorge, from Dr. Salama, and I really never experienced any, any uh, uh, they are here, they can witness it. We never have it's external true. external uh, 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 shield exposure. Uh, we should especially take care for the lower canines uh, to shape socket shield really good because it has really tendency uh, to make external uh, exposure. And uh, internal, it is uh, what uh, I, have, uh, I have been talking uh, earlier, it's important to make sure that we have two or three millimeter uh, space between our prosthetic components and socket shield. And in this way, we are not going to have uh, shield exposure. And if there is shield exposure, uh, it's uh, easy to manage. It is uh, an easy complication. Uh, just uh, use your burst to really uh, uh, to reduce, reduce mm. it, to reduce it. And uh, I know that uh, Dr. Salama and Howie, they prefer to place also connective tissue graft. To cover it. To cover it, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All questions? Um, I think there is one more or... Uh, yes, uh, from our dear friend Carlos, he asked about uh, narrow implants in the second Carlos, zone. you must come again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you prefer a uh, bigger diameter or smaller diameter? Of smaller the... diameters. Smaller it, diameter. Like 375? Three? Like 375. It depends. depends. Like... It is, you know, if, it, if it's a lower incisor or the lateral incisor, it's 3.0. But here, uh, take a care because uh, not all 3.0 implants from all implant companies have all prostodontic components. Uh, uh, you know, uh, like uh, angled screw uh, channels and like this. And uh, for central incisors, it depends, but uh, I prefer smaller, smaller implant diameters. Okay. So the time is up. The time is out. But I think we should answer uh, oh, oh, the, the last one last question, question from yes, Dr. Uh, Jorge Campos. Uh, Jorge, wow. <laughs> Jorge, wait, 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 wait for Jorge. Mm -hmm. So the question was, uh, do you think uh, should be papilla preserved through C shape? I think that papilla can be preserved through the C shape, but it is what I believe. I don't have any evidence. And why I believe is it's not uh, this uh, hard uh, uh, piece of uh, augmentation material socket that is uh, 
holding our uh, bone, also interproximal bone, uh, it is uh, mostly because we have more blood supply to the peri-implant connective tissue. If our socket shield has a bigger surface, we have more blood supply and blood supply coming also into interproximal areas. And for this reason, I think that C-shaped socket shield really helps. As I said, I'm doing this uh, research and measurements and uh, studies comparing, trying to take all these parameters in account and uh, we are going to do it all together from our group and uh, I think in the near future we are going to have uh, real answers. Hi, Jorge. <laughs> It's and time to finish. Yeah, maybe you want to answer uh, Chuck's Another question. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> And this will be the last one. Yes. So the Chuck, uh, the Chuck uh, asks how to manage root dehiscence of cuspids. What What do you prefer? What do you? I, I, I think like that. If uh, we don't raise the flap and uh, do socket shield, and the socket shield is stable, I don't touch it. I left it like this and uh, if I really wanted to see what's going on on the buccal part and uh, I have raised a flap, elevated a flap, then uh, I'm going to augment it okay. to compensate for any possible resorption. Now the time is out. Yes. Thank you, boys. Really, uh, you must know it is holiday today in Croatia, and uh, it's also vacation period. This guy is on vacation. He is not. It's Saturday <laughs> night, and they joined me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your questions. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.